Sego Sewo Guego. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi everyone. I'm a Ganyange Haga, a Mohawk. Welcome to my territory. <laughs> I'd like to start today by teaching you a Ganyangeha word, Ungwe Hungwe. Can everyone say that? <laughs> Very good. Ungwe Hungwe is the word we use to, uh, for Indian or Aboriginal or First Nations, and I'm going to use all of these terms interchangeably today in my talk. I'm a contemporary artist. I use a variety of, media, of mediums, uh, but mostly images and words, to express the solution that I see to a problem. I consider that to be my job. I saw a problem. I saw a couple of problems. The first was a lack of images of ourselves, Ungwe Hungwe peoples, in the future. Except for a couple of examples on Star Trek, I never saw any images of us in spaceships, or of Ungwe Hungwe robots, or even of us using computers. And yet, who here has seen this image? Or this one? Or one just like it? There are plenty of images of us in the past, and everybody loves them. I love them. They're beautiful, and educational, and nostalgic. Unfortunately, when that is all you see, these images actually hurt us. How? As you probably suspect, they hurt us by creating stereotypes of Ungwe Hungwe. Seeing nothing but images like these conveys the idea that the only real Indians wear beads and buckskin and live in a teepee. But what really surprised me is that even Ungwe Hungwe started to believe the stereotype. It was like, just because this white guy had photographed our great and great-great-grandparents, we decided to make him the authority on the topic. It was one thing when non-native people thought that stuff about us, but when our own people started casting out those they deemed less Indian, we were in trouble. Imagine that our mind's eye is a gallery filled with pictures. It was as if that gallery was so full of those olden day images that there was no room for any images of us in the present and forget about how we might look in the future. Which leads me to the second problem I saw, lack of empowerment. It seemed to me that so many Aboriginal people did not feel like they could affect the future. This perception was supported by horrible statistics for Native people, including highest dropout rate, highest incarceration rate, and highest suicide rate. So what did I do? I made art, of course. I started imagining ourselves in the future. Because I believe that the medium is a big part of the message, I decided to use new media to do it. I like to lump all of this new media stuff, software, apps, websites, video games, virtual worlds, machinima, into one term, cyberspace. I use cyberspace as a medium because I believe it is a metaphor for the future. The first piece in which I consciously visualize the future is called Imagining Indians in the 25th Century. It's a web-based paper doll slash time travel journal. Its main character, Gadzitsa Hawi Kapozo, visits 10 dates one per century throughout a millennium of First Nations history. For each date, Gadzitsa Howie wears a, a, an appropriate costume. She starts in 1490, two years before Columbus's first visit to the so-called New World, new to who, <laughs> and ends in 2490 at the Edmonton Olympics. For each date, she wears an historically appropriate costume, and she um, writes a journal entry describing the experience from her perspective as a First Nations woman. Time Traveler TM is like imagining Indians on testosterone. It is the story of Hunter, an angry young Mohawk man who lives in the year 2121. He uses a technology of his time to visit historical events that teach him about his heritage and, like every good coming-of-age story, himself. I trace a narrative arc, 
mimicking the one that Aboriginal people have been following, from his unhappiness and unwellness to a point where he self-actualizes, learning to love himself and another while also gaining fame and fortune, because we don't see enough images of rich and famous Ungwe Hungwe either. I like to think that by adding these images of successful Native people to our collective mind's eye, that we can begin to reverse the, tra the tragic statistics and start to see our people thriving and becoming an integral part of North American society. But I don't think that just me making images is enough. I want to encourage other Native people to join me in cyberspace. In 2005, my brilliant partner, Jason Edward Lewis, and I started a research network called Aboriginal Territories in Cyberspace. One of our major initiatives is called SKINS, a digital media workshop for Aboriginal youth. The kids learn a wide range of ideas and skills, starting with tales, legends, and histories from their own community. We then teach them how to take that story and translate it from the oral tradition to a new one, the video game. Once they've then done that challenging conceptual work, we then instruct them in the, basics, uh, in the technical basics, 3D modeling, animation, programming, to name the biggies. We believe that we are teaching them to be proud of their heritage and ultimately how to see themselves in the future. While we Ungwe Hunwe are doing this work of envisioning our futures, we have to also be aware of what's going on in the wider world. And I want to tell you what I'm seeing there. I'm seeing non-native people waking up waking up to the fact that we are still here, waking up to the fact that colonization is ongoing. Non-native people are seeing the, the environmental destruction and effects of advanced capitalism, all made possible because of the dispossession of native land and the relocation, and worse, of native people. And they want it to stop. And they're taking action. They're participating in flash mob round dances, side by side with Indians, in protest over ridiculous laws being passed by government. They're learning the treaties and re realizing that a treaty must, is made and must be upheld by two parties, not just one. They're even making art about it. Thank you. Ungwe Hume have had to overcome the threat of extinction. I believe we've achieved that. We are here, and we no longer have to discuss our very survival. Native people have had to fight for our languages and our cultural practices. Through widespread revitalization projects, I believe we are achieving that. What is next for us to consider on a deep, wide societal level is the idea of thriving. Who do we want to be in the future? What, as individuals, nations, and cultures, do we have to give to society? What technologies do we want to develop? What kind of spaceship do we want to fly? Merci. Thank you. Niamogoa. <laughs>